Hello and welcome to the video for what are blueprint macros. I've created a quick example here. We'll just simply run through it. Basically, if player one gets to 10, player one wins, and if player two gets to 10, player two wins. And obviously, I don't have any code in here to check. It just simply runs each time you click the button. So this is pretty simple. Basically, when the player clicks the button, we give them a point. We check to see if their score is greater than 10. And then we go ahead and branch, and then we go ahead and print the string. And we do this in a sequence, so that way we do it every time. So, basically macros are a way of taking all of this and collapsing it down into one node, so that way it makes it easier to read. The point of blueprints is to make it easier and readable. So, we can go into macros and create a new macro, and then we can fill it out. So, for example, I've gone ahead and created a new macro right here and it's called did anyone win we have an input and an output and then you have all of your code that runs in between your input or output if you click on it you'll have your details down here you'll have your description which category should go in any keywords when it is compact what the node title looks like and then any colors you then have your input section and your output section for your inputs, you can have all your standard variables, but you can also have wildcard, so it can accept any source, and execute, which is an execution pin. The one thing that is nice about macro libraries is, I can actually click new, and you'll notice exec is in here, and you notice I have two execution wires. You can have multiple execution input and multiple execution outputs on a macro, which makes it really handy if you're trying to clean things up. So it's our standard method of adding inputs and subtracting inputs. You can do new or you can click X to close them out. If you'd like to reorder these inputs and outputs, you can click on your little drop down, adjust your default value if you have any, and then use the up and down arrow in order to move it up and down in your actual input and output. So what we did here is I have my input, I do my check, I do my sequence, and then I do an output. So if I was to actually take all of this stuff out, it would be all of this right here. I could replace it with one macro node. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's delete it. Let's pull in our macro. Here is the execute wires. We'll put our player one score in and our player two score in. And then if player one wins, we print this. And if player two wins, we print this. So we've taken those, you know, one, two, three, four, five, five nodes and collapsed it down into one node it makes it a little bit cleaner so that way if we run it it will still run and we'll get the same result so another way of doing this is let's go ahead and undo and we'll go back to our original set of nodes here you can actually right click when you have a group of nodes selected and collapse down into a node really simply so we'll do this we'll select this section here we'll go ahead and right click and collapse to macro and you'll notice it will collapse it to a macro that has the same thing when we set it up our integer ins our execute in and then our two execute outs and if we were to run it we should expect the same result and it works if we go in here you'll notice it is laid out basically the same as when we set it up the difference being of course nothing's labeled you can go in and label it how you want it the nice thing is it works on pretty much anything you select. So if we were to select everything, unselect our button clicks, collapse to macro, you'll notice we now actually have it all set up in a nice little function, one little thing, and our graph is actually really clean. It makes it a little hard to read and understand though, so that is one thing that's important. You should really use your macros for smaller things, like for example, does the player have enough, enough energy to jump? So you could come in, you could take the input of the energy, you can execute off of that, you can compare that to the amount of energy they need to jump, and then you can return the results. You have a couple nodes there. Or you could collapse it into one macro, and that way you can just drop that one node in multiple places and clean up your graph a little bit. So I would like, when I use nodes, I personally think about it, what is reusable? Well, the amount of life coming in here is unique to the player one and this life adjustment is unique to player two. But this, for the most part, is not unique. Both of them, because you notice there's one execute node, run the same check. Both of them check for health. Both of them do an if, and then both of them output. 
So collapsing this down to a macro like we did is actually appropriate. So there you go. That's how you use macros and that's what they're used for. It's just a simple way of restructuring and reflowing your blueprint so that way you have less stuff. You don't have 8,000 nodes when you open up your graph. You go ahead and you actually have small compact nodes that are efficient and that let your graph flow and look better.